YouTube Nation, what it do? My people from all over. Top of the morning. Today, I got something different. I got a, a interesting story. It's coming to you in the form of a traditional podcast, meaning no visual. I got something going from my man, D-Rock D. For y'all that grew up in the 80s, uh, 1987 in particular, you was listening to rap music, LA rap music in the streets. A lot of y'all remember this song, Killer Dayton's by my man, D-Rock D. So anyway, I was on the phone with my man, Nick, the homie Nick, uh, a couple of days ago. Me and Nick was hopping it up, and Nick like, I'm going to click you in with D-Rock. He clicked me in with D-Rock. Now, I had never heard, had a conversation with D-Rock D. I remember the song, Killer Dayton's, because like I said, this is all 1987, which is relevant to the stories that I've been telling, 1987. So I found it only fitting that I squeeze this story from a man, D-Rock D, in with the year 1987. A New York cat that was out here in L.A. putting it down in the hip-hop game when things was just like in the beginning before things changed this is like the be this is like before gangster rap was born this is like right before gangster rap was born for y'all that don't know uh gangster rap was of course created by the media the title was the rappers didn't come out saying they was gangster rappers the media labeled them that and they took that and they ran with it so this is a little story man from my man d rock d check my man out and if you're riding to work right now, this is something cool. This is the podcast you ride to work early this morning. You just listen to it. You're just around the house cleaning up or something like that. Whatever you're doing, just listen. Just check it out. This is an interesting story. Like I said, if you grew up in the 80s, 1987 in particular, you remember the song Killer Dayton's, you're going to find this an interesting story. Check my man out, D Rock D. Here he is. Hey, man, uh, real quick, what's, what's say, say your name for me one time, bro. Listen, man, everybody get open like church doors. This is OG, 2D, D-Rock D from 65th Broad Lawn, 47th Place in Broadway, San Fernando Valley, 818 Stand Up. What's All right? Up? I'm the original, wrote Nissan's, Nissan's in the city, Crenshaw, Weston, Vermont, and Hoover. I'm D-Rock D. Yeah, I'm not dead, son. Me and Ice-T, same record label, Saturn Records back in the day, all right? So listen, I'm fucking with Crazo and my man Nick from So West Coast, D-Rock D. I ain't been to California in over 26 years. I'm going to give y'all a scoop on the real deal with Killer Dayton, song I did, all right? So now listen, I was hot on the streets of California when I did Nissan's in the City, you all right? Chris Shaw, watch it, boom, the Nissans, Nissan, Nissans, Nissan, 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 a nigga with a Nissan took my bit. All right, I did that. That was a, that was a mediocre record. Is that then I did my fresh Nissan. After I did my <laughs> fresh Nissan, it was a recut of my Adidas from Run DMC. When I did that, I got a little more hype going. So boom, and it was feeling that a little bit. So I had niggas in the hood. So niggas in the hood that was big time with Nissans, they all knew me. They had the center lines, the 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 uh, the, uh, 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 the, uh, the 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 day ends, and I was writing rap songs about this and that and that and this, right? In the meantime, I was at the radio song battle rapping. I was ten and old. I lost to some female. She beat me. She shook her ass and shook her titty. Beat me. All right. Anyway, I chalked that up. I still got records in the street, and I'm still riding the bus. I'm on the 204 on Vermont every day. Skinny nigga, Lee Jeans, gang bangers, Chris Blood, rolling up on me. Where you from, nigga? No win. I'm not beating up nobody. I'm I'm New York, nigga. I'm rapping. I'm trying to be big in California. Leave me the fuck alone. All right. I'm I'm down with my boys. Okay. I go to Nobel. I went to Nobel Junior High School. I graduated from Nobel. I used to live in the jungle, Sherman Alley. Wow. I learned how to swim at Dorsey High School in the indoor swimming pool. All right? Been there. So now I'm out. I'm doing things. Things go by with the killer things. Mm -hmm. Some of the OG hustlers in the neighborhood go, yo, D-Rock. My boy, Devastating E, he a real dude. Okay? 
He used to always bump my record, Nissan's, Nissan's. He got tired of playing the streets. My boy, Eric, he said, yo, son, I'm tired of playing the streets. I want to be down. I want to rap. Yo, D-Rock, you should do a song called Killer Date. Now, this is a nigga that was major big time. He had mad bread. He pushed it. He was down with my boy, Bert, and me and my boy, DMD, used to rap. And when Devastate E came to us, because he used to support me for years. He supported me. He played my music. He said, yo, you should do a song called Killer Day. And, and you know our favorite go-to drug was, let's go get five 40 ounces. So we went and got some old E. My nigga Eric said, yo, me and Jock and Eric sat up there. We wrote Killer Dayton's. And when we wrote it, we wrote it together. And then we decided to break it up. You can roll on silver lines, you can roll on laces, but don't try to roll on no killer dating, killer dating. So now the thing that made that record was, first of all, D-Rock D was already established in California as far as putting out records. I was putting, a, I had a nigga that I didn't introduce everybody to. When Cletus Anderson would come get me, he'd give me five, six hundred dollars, take me to Denny's. Nigga, I'm in the ghetto, living with my grandmama, sleeping on the couch. You know, she taking BCs, and I'm running to the store, getting seven up for her, holding the four down. I'm trying to be a big rap star in California, you know. And uh, I'm on Saturn Records. I'm big. I go across the street on Vermont, and I walk to the store. There's a gang that owns this store called Mintlo Crips. Yeah. I walk out the store, Mintlow Crips are playing my record. My record is being played from a cassette tape. And I asked them, who is that? The first time D.Y.D. knew that the rap game was serious is when a nigga told me that the rap he was listening to was his homeboy. Now, I used to live on 65th in Vermont. And I used to live on 65th Place. And Butlon. Now, this store was on the other side of Vermont where all the Mitlow Crips went. Right. They were called Mitlows. Yeah, them the homies. A Mitlow Crip told me, because I was a punk ass kid from, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't active. I'm a punk kid, not active. He said, I said, yo, who is that you listening to? He said, this is my homeboy, cuz. Wooty, wooty, woo. And I didn't know how to react to tell a nigga, that's me. I did that in the studio like three weeks ago. This nigga's playing my music and he told me it was his homeboy. And then Cletus came back and told me, he said, d -Rock, you gotta understand how shit works in California. Cause on my record, I said, one, two, one, two in the place to be. My name is MC D Rock D and I am from 65 Street. And then my homeboy said, I am DJ Slice Master K and I'm also from 65 Street. And I never knew that I was causing an underground war among certain people when I was doing Nissan's. Anyway, I was protected because I was down from Butt Lawn between Raymond and Kansas. Vic Burt ran the car wash, him and Wayman, Freeway Rick, all them niggas. I was back when niggas had Mercedes Benz 1000s with the curtains in the window. I grew up with little Tootie Reese. I don't know if you know who yeah, Tootie Reese I know, is. I know of them. Okay, well, I'll call Tootie Reese right now if you want me to. No, nah, I don't want you to call I'll call him. Nah. Okay. Nah, you gotta call him. <laughs> I'm good with you. I'll call J Dub, too. You know J Dub? No. Nah, I'll call J Dub, be here. I'll call him right now. That's my family. It's a carry. But anyway, this one, this one, my boy D E D E said, yo, he got tired of playing the streets. He gave me the idea to do the record to a Satan. We wrote the record. Me and Jock wrote the record. Eric wanted to be a rapper. We let him rap with us. We broke it up with a group. We changed the group name to Poetry in Motion. Now, as you, I'm telling you this long ass story so you can document something I'm going to tell you. Hey, you look, know how they say, I, listen look, to the end? I was about to ask you about Poetry in Motion because I see that on your, on your hold CD. Hold on, hold on. Listen to the end. Yeah. L listen to the end. Because we got DJ... Uh, 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 we got DJ Fatterbox. We know we got DJ Fatbox. And we got, uh, a couple other DJs that were down with us. Now, since I had already did record Nissan's in the city, my fresh Nissan's, I'm the man. 
I'm D Rock D. The record company Cletus Anderson is the guy that owns all VIP record stores at the time. So I'm signed to Cletus Anderson, who owned Saturn Records. That used to be down in like I think it was like twenty five sixty Pico. That's what a pressing plant was. See, at that time, I knew what pressing plants were when niggas couldn't even get their shit on a cassette. So that's how I see them help me get down with Cleonis Anderson. Okay, he owned all the VIP record stores and he had a pressing plant. He was the first guy who got a hold of IC. After he got IC from the West Coast, he had me. He had D Ron D that was on the West Coast, but he knew he was gonna get that East Coast shit from me. Okay? So it was D Rock D and I C. Well basically it was Ice T and then D Rock D. I T was down with Cletus. But Cletus thought that's how my records came out. That's what made me famous in California. Cause I had distribution then through him. Cause he owned VIP records. Mm -hmm. The one on whatever whichever one you wanna go to, he owned them all. And he lived in Carson near Banning High School. Wow. I don't know if you know what Banning High School is, but he yeah, lived in Carson near there. That's Wilmington. Though. Okay. Yeah, yeah Wilmington. Yeah. Okay. So, right. So now, my boy E, Devil Satan E, he made it. He made it pushing that thing. And he don't want to do it no more. And he like, nigga, I know D. Rock D. And, and, and my boy Devil Satan E used to have the flyest Nissans in the city. And when I did Nissan, my shit was popping. I don't know if you remember the one, the Crenshaw Western Vermont and Hoover. I'm deep. That's my favorite. That's my famous line for anybody in our generation. Right. So when he come to me, I like, fuck it. He my man. I end up going on tour with Johnny Rivers and I toured and did an opening show. I did a 50 state. I did a, uh, I, no, I did 52 shows in like 40 states across the United States because of a guy named Johnny Rivers and Chevy Shane. When they took me on tour and I got off tour, I was living on, is it called Cimarron? Is there a street in called Cimarron yeah. and Florence? Yeah. Cimarron. I was living on Cimarron. I was living on Cimarron. I, I think I was living on 67th and Cimarron. I was near Florence. And when I got off tour, that's when Jock and Eric came over and picked me up. Eric had a green Cadillac, and he was like, yo, D-Rock, yo, niggas been pumping you, you just getting off tour. And that's when we did Killer Dayton's. Now, the funny thing, when I say listen to the end, is you'll see a record that's on the market that'll say Killer Dayton's, and it'll say D-Rock D. Yeah. Killer Dayton. Yeah, it's yellow. It won't say poetry in motion. Let me tell you why. It's because when I got off tour, Eric and Jock and Poetry in Motion, they wasn't signed to the record label. I was the solo artist. I did that because I was sterile. These are my homies. I'm bringing them in the studio. They were like, cool, fine. Like, D Rock do what he want to do. But when we did the record, they were like, nigga, we don't know poetry in motion. We know D Rock D. So when the record came out, the homies got mad at me. They was like, yo, D Rock, I thought we was a new group, poetry in motion. But see, the record company knew me as D Rock D because I did Nissan's in the city and Nissan's, and I told them I'm going to do a record called Killer Dayton. So I'm still D Rock D. So I told them, calm down, calm down. Okay, and I showed that I was thorough because I made the adjustment. I said, yo, I forgot to let y'all know. They, cause they, they, they would have pressed that shit real quick, put it out. It was like, D-Rock D, Killer Dayton. And Jock and Eric was like, yo, I thought we were the group called Poetry in Motion. They wasn't feeling that, which I understood. Because that's what I said, we're a group now. Even though I'm paving the way, I'm busting rhyme right now. You feel what I'm saying? With Tribe Called Quest. Right. I got one guy, he really can't rap, but he a loyal nigga and he real. He want to rap, but he can't rap. I got DMD, he can rap, but he ain't really a group with me. He could be a solo artist. 
So we do killer days together. So when we did that and the record came out, their feelings was kind of hurt. I understood that. I called Cletus. I'm like, yo, listen, man. Killer Dayton's, man, that's my group, Poetry in Motion. Y'all got to stop that press copy, and y'all got to release the new copy. No problem. So now they release the new copy. You will see Poetry in Motion, and then we put the DJ on there. Uh, I, 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 uh, little Rockin', Little Ronnie Rockin' G. You got to know Little Ronnie yeah, Rockin' G, because yeah, he, he was Carson. down with Ass Hard. Yeah, he from Carson. Yeah, he... He from, he from yeah, Carson. He was, and he was part That's of what I'm that. saying, Barry, Little Rock oh, yeah. and G. So yeah. he's on my record. And he was part of that group he, called the Nice of the Turntables. That was his group, Nice of the Turntables. Exactly. exactly. Without the one nine zero. So, yeah. so we used that little image on the record with poetry and motion. And when I saw Jock and him, you know, and you know, I always had New York, and Jock and Eric was always my family. But when it happened with Killer Dayton, I set up our first show. Our first show was at World on Wheels. We did our first show at World on Wheels, and then after that, I was more like Buster Run. I was more like, Eric was my nigga, Jack was my nigga. Eric is still my nigga. I call him right now. You want me to call D? Now, Eric is devastating E. He was Dog Pound's tour manager. If you know devastating E, he's the one who got me the right killer days. Now, he the one that's down with What's that nigga, uh, what's the nigga name, uh, Nick, uh, Kid Disaster, or KD? Oh, KD, he oh, yeah. down with KD. Yeah. See, now, Devastating E is on the record with me from Killer Dayton, but the record wasn't done because of him. He never said the record was done because of him, but since I haven't been in California, he has gained recognition from doing the record with us. He was the guy who couldn't rap at the time, but he became a rapper. I'm going to tell you, anything this dude ever wanted to do, he could do. So I ain't fought him because he wasn't no rapper then, because he's still my man. And he'll tell you the same story. But he has rap, he has videos out now. He's down with the dog pound. Like, he's big in the California hip-hop, you know, and he can actually rap now. Mm. The nigga's nice. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you know who Devastating E is, Devastating E is Eric. His real name is Eric. Eric Wright. Eric Wright is uh that's easy he got brown eyes. <laughs> he's a cool ass you know what I'm talking about. Right. No, 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 no. Easy like, easy, bro. Yo, Eric Williams. I think it's Eric Williams. My bad. My bad, son. I was like, we all know who Eric Wright is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. You know I'm out here, son. It's cold. I'm a 10 below zero. No, but no, my nigga Eric Williams. No, true story. This is my dude. He's a good friend of mine. All right. Eric <laughs> Williams. For sure that. <laughs> Listen. That nigga, listen, that nigga dropped everything to go for the music industry because he was major on the other thing. I ain't going to criminate him, but he was top-notch tier. You know what I'm telling you? He was he was up there. But him, Eric Williams, um, he, you know, he, by him being in California and I'm not there, when he bumping the people, um, he was telling me, yeah, nigga, I was down on Killer Day, I did Killer Day, and, you know, so he basically said, you know, and he's always big up me. He's never said he's the originator, you know, he never said he wrote it, but, you know, he on the record. Who ain't gonna say they on the record when they, you know, you know what I mean? He on the record, so you got a right to say, that's me. Right. But that's the story of Killer Dayton. My boy, Eric. Got me to write the song. We actually wrote the song in his apartment upstairs somewhere. But he wasn't no rapper. And he used to support me years before he decided to want. He was like an easy E and wanted to rap and did Killer Things with me. Mm. You feel me? Right. So that that's how Killer... So when Killer Things was done, after we did our first show at World on Wheels, I was more like, you know, I'm not no crip. I'm not no blood. I was more like, you know, so I kind of like just went back east. And when I went back east, I let them have it. You feel me? Yeah. Like, they was like, they did another record called Doing Damage. I told Cletus, go ahead, go ahead and put a couple of records out for them. I'm going back to New York. Because, you know, Cletus did records for me in um, Brooklyn. You'll see a song called Party Poopers. 
but they fucked up on the writing and called it Party Poppers, if you go look at it. So I had other records I was doing in New York, and I told Cletus to keep poetry in motion. That was my loyalty to the hood in L.A. So I was like, yo, DMD and Eric, keep pressing them niggas. So Cletus started messing with them in substitution of me, and I went back to New York. So they did another record called Doing Damage on the back of the record, mm-hmm. and that was all they did. And, you know, and then, then Jock did his own thing, and then Eric got better at rapping, and then he got down with the dog pound, and he do a lot of things, but he's out there. Eric is, Eric is a real dude. Um, no problems with him, man. He's, he, he, he's top notch. But that's the original story of Killer Days. I'm the OG 2D, D Rod D. That's how Killer Days is. I basically gained him the record by going back to New York and not really wanting to. I could have stayed in California. We was a group poetry in motion, without a doubt. But then, you know, I gave him a little push start. Jock was an advanced rapper. DMD, he was an advanced rapper. But Killer Days was um, Eric's first thing doing. And, uh, Everybody needs a start. That was his start. And if you ask me, he's made the best of it. Because he got a mad shit. I, I wish I could tell you more about but he got mad shit going on. I'm surprised you might not know him, Crazo. You don't know Devastating E? Nah, no, I don't know him. You don't know Devastating E? No, nah, I don't know Devastating E. Yeah. He's the yeah, Devastating E. Now, he holds down the biggest reputation for killer days in California. So for people who wouldn't know d Rock D, they might think that he's the number one guy for Killer Dayton. But then again, I don't really think so because he's never perpetrated that. He's always told people who I was. So he's the ringleader of Killer Dayton in California while I'm not there. That's how I look at that. Hey, hey, on YouTube, they got it up. They got your video up there with Poetry in Motion, 1987, produced by Dr. Drake. Yeah, yeah, I had Dr. Dre produce it because because Bobcat did. Yeah, me and Clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I'm telling you. I left it, yeah. but see, you can go, you can you, you can you can go Google a couple more, and you'll see D Rock D Killer Dates produced by Dr. Dre. I do. So that verifies my story. In fact, <laughs> oh yeah, on Saturn on Saturn Records, 1987. I see. I'm I'm actually looking at it right now. I got it on my screen. Do you see the D Rock D without poetry in motion? I see D Rock D Killer Dayton Saturn Records 1987 KD NWA Tidy T and more. I don't know. Oh no, it stopped. Stop right there. KD wasn't even with me there. Yeah, they got his name. Niggas ripping the fuck. Yeah, they, they got. He they, wasn't even with me there. Yeah, they got his that new shit. Hey, you know what that is? My bad. You know what that is? That's a mix, bro. That's one of those mixes where they got other. So there's other songs they got in the mix with your record there first. No, no, that's not. No, that's not a mix, and I'm very aware of it. That's because Devastating E is down with them. Oh, nah, God. that's not no mix. No, nah, the, the industry got it fucked up. Every time you Google D Rock D and uh, Killer Dayton, KD's face pop up, and they try to say him and I got the same name. Well, I'm still not buying that. Because just because a nigga got the same name don't mean you pop up on a nigga's record identification. But you do see a record that say D Rock D, I'm Killer looking, Dayton. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. With, on the, yeah, that looking. was the original record. Yeah. That was the original one. And the one with poetry in motion is the one that I made the company put on the name. I'm playing it right now. My roller, that's Eric. He couldn't rap. And Dr. Dre cut me. This is me on over some rim. So Dre produced this? Yeah, Dr. Dre produced this. Dude, listen. Dr. Dre produced it because I was hot with Nissan in the city. I did my friend Nissan, and Dr. Dre was working with Cletus Anderson through VIP Records. And he said, I got a kid named D-Rock D out of New York, down with the and m who wants these guys to do this and do that. And Dr. Dre did the song. I had my boy DJ Palau. I don't know if you've heard of Palau. Palau did my first original cut for Killer Dayton. We took my original cut and we took it to Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre reproduced it and put the SB-1200 beat on it. He got the record, Engine, Engine number nine, that's going down Chicago line. That's what you hear there. That's the and sample. the reason he was doing that, because that's when the Chicago niggas was coming in from um, 
uh, Chicago to California in the jungle down with the Black Peace Stars. So that was a heavy rip. That's from California and New York. So Dr. Dre was young. He was fucking with that engine, engine number nine, and he put that on Killer Dayton's. I bought Killer Dayton to Dr. Dre, and he remixed it for me because Cletus Anderson asked him to do so mm. for D. Rod D. Whoa. Had nothing to do with Eric or no one else. All right. And all the names you see on there, you'll see DMD, DJ you'll Weasel. see Eric Williams, you'll see Bilal Bashir. Yo. All the names after Eric and them were all with me. I say like Easy E, DJ Weasel, Slice Master K. Slice Master K was my DJ from uh, 65th and Butlon, okay? DJ Weasel, he was down with Antoine. You uh, you might know DJ Weasel. You don't remember him? No, nah, I don't know him. He used to be with Antoine. Okay, right with DJ Weasel. And DJ Bilal. Bilal, he was down with Ice. He did songs for Ice T. I don't know if you know who Bilal is. Bilal Bashir. Bala, Bala Bashir, he was out of the Bronx, he lived out in the valley. He was down with Jeff, Jeff and Divine Styler. All right. <laughs> I remember hearing the name, I never he, met him though. <laughs> yup, yup. He was a good friend of mine too, I used to live with him, his family. We're like family. He's the one who started Everlast. He's the one who was behind the scenes on a lot of people. He did a lot of uh, music for Ryan Sinek and Ice-T. Mm -hmm. He lived out in Woodland Hills, Bala Bashir. Yeah, I heard the name before. I think I heard it. I heard mm -hmm. it from Antron. I think that's where I heard the name from. Yep. So he he was on, but um, yeah. So I basically walked out on Killer Day and um because you know, you know, it, it, I, I I probably would have stayed and did the Killer Day and if I was more like 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 I'll give you a story. Here's a story. And let Snoop Dogg hear it. I even got video of Snoop Dogg singing Killer Dayton. I'll dig it up for you and find it. But I'm going to give you another story. One day I was at the Roxy on Sunset. And I used to have a DJ. He was a Chinese dude. We used to call him Chinese nigga. But his name was DJ D. Lu. And he was the VIP DJ at the Roxbury. Okay. I used to hang out. I used to do what you did for Antoine. But I was an MC, so I used to roadie. Yeah. I used to carry the records to get into the Roxy, the Roxbury, excuse me. I used to roadie for him just to get in the Roxbury, go into the VIP, disappear, fuck with all the bitches in the VIP. I'm D Rock D, so I freestyle at the end. Snoop Dogg comes through the Roxbury one day. I see him coming through the doors, bodyguards and everything, pushing people around, okay? I get in the way. I said, yo, Snoop Dogg, what up? I said, my name is D-Rod D, and I give him a handshake. And he's walking, and when I give him a handshake, the nigga grip my hand and stop. And he come back, and he go, you D-R-D, cuz? <laughs> now, he called me D, he called me D-R-D. Yeah, D-R-D. Because on the VIP mix CDs, on the record, it said D-R-D. So when I said D-Rod D, he was wise enough to say D-R-D. He said, you D-R-D, cuz? <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm D-Rod D. He said, yo, cuz, that shit you did, man, I used to look up to you. That's, that's the shit that got me wanting to rap. And he stepped off. Now, if anybody knows, Snoop, now listen. Dudes went on to know that I did records before Snoop Dogg and him even could get in the studio. But he told me that. And if anybody want to verify that story with Snoop, verify it. That, that's back in the day, Roxbury. I would have to pull up the year. But since then, by me being in New York, Snoop Dogg has acknowledged Killer Dayton. And nine times out of ten, he's probably acknowledged it through D E Z E. The guy that couldn't rap, that started off, that can rap now, that was major on the street, that was like an easy E. So he's probably getting the recognition for Killer Dayton's, but I'm the originator. <laughs> and I'm the original writer. He came up with the ideal, drunk the beer with us. We wrote the song and we chopped it up. 
and you can tell the way it's chopped up. But in when the record is cut on those cuts with Dr. Dre is scratching it, that's Dr. Dre scratching it, that's me on the hook, that's Jock with the, 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 the deep voice, and he could rap. He was a bad rapper, you know. And then you can hear, you know, you can hear the other guy, Devastate E. And he was on the song, and, and we was happy we did the song. We all shared. We didn't. We didn't belittle nobody. Or oh, he ain't nice. Or this nigga. He down with us. We gonna do this. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And he became. He's a good rapper now. He got mad shit going. He became the Dog Pound tour manager, and he did this. And he he got shit going on now. Devastating. He he did some podcasts and too, probably. Mm-hmm. But yeah, P family. You ever bump into Devastating E? I can say one thing, he family. If he say anything different, you can say, well, D-Rock D didn't tell me that, but he told me you family, but he don't let him tell you nothing different than what I told you. Right. Yeah, they, 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 they got you all they over started. YouTube. You all over YouTube, man. You got a whole bunch of videos all on the low rider, uh, the low rider soundtrack and all that shit. They got you. No, 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 let me go with that. Let me, uh, let me tell you about low rider soundtrack. Yeah. That was my boy named Roberto, uh, 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 Al- uh Roberto Alpad. He had a, uh, 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 shit out in, uh, what's that place called? That place called West Coast, West Coast Vena. Yeah. West Coast Vena. He started doing low rider volumes or whatever. So he, so Killer Diggins is on Low Rider Volume Two, which makes that a classic yeah. because Low Rider Volume is up to over three hundred volumes. So if you got Low Rider Volume three hundred and you can go to a Low Rider Volume Two, Low Rider Volume Two is a classic, no matter what fucking songs are on it. And Killer Diggins is on it. And the way Killer Diggins got put on Low Rider Volume Two, okay. My Spanish homeboy, when we were dealing with the box, I ran with a lot of Spanish people. I ain't gonna throw it out there, but niggas know D Rock D. I ran with heavy Spanish essays in LA. Okay? Okay? I knew a lot of crazy riders, 13th Street, 18th Street, Clan Thrones. I knew a lot of Playboys. I had a lot of support with that Nissan and that Killer Dayton with the essays. By me not being a cripple of blood, I had a lot of support with the essays. I knew a lot of Crips. I know Rolling Sixties. I know Black Gorilla families. <laughs> D-Rod know a lot of people on a lot of people. So I always stay neutral because I'm New York. D-Rod ain't banging. What set you from and all that ain't not hit me with that. So... That's how that went. But, um, you know, getting, get, you know, so much other shit I done done. Shit, shit's out there, son. Killer Things is a great movement, but that's how come it really didn't take off. I got some clips like, like Cletus Anderson was paying $15,000 a week for advertisement on 1580K Day. It was a little record store. A, re- a radio, uh, yeah. radio station up, I think it was called La Merc, or it was La Merc or Lafayette, somewhere up off of La Merc Park, Lafayette Park, somewhere off of Crenshaw, some of those tiny wines. Yeah, it was La Merc Park, K-Day. I've been there. That was K-Day. What's that? 1580 K-Day, that was La Merc Park. Okay, okay, yeah, La Merc Park, all right. <clears throat> so, Cletus Anderson, the guy that owned VIP record stores, he had other things going on where he was paying K-Day $15,000 a week. And when he started putting out records and stuff, he was having a hard time getting people to play the record Killer Dayton. This is another story. This is a story that uh, Eric D-E-Z-E might not know. He know the story of Cletus having a hard time getting the record played on 1580 K-Day, but here's why. Untold, this is exclusive, untold, never been heard before. The reason Cletus Anderson had a hard time getting Killer Dayton's play on, on K-Day is because when Killer Dayton first came out, as we all know, it did not say poetry in motion. It said D-Rock D. 
So 1580 K-Day, little did D.Y.D. Like know, I was more like the Warriors, and every gang in California was looking for me because I said, I'm from 65 Street, not knowing. But I'm the only nigga on 65 Street with a, with a chain going from Leeds and some Adidas with no shoestrings. And, 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 and all my homies and he and them, they got Louis, Louis Vuitton, Strokes, and Reese on, Stand Up Pop, Tootie Reese, Jake Dub, the Rolex Bandit, Johnny Black, Swanee Mac, niggas, we got thousands of dollars. I'm the only New York spec on the block. But every fucking block in California is looking for me because my records are coming out of VIP record stores that in Carson, Compton, wherever. I don't even know where these fucking record stores are. Not knowing, I'm like the Warriors. I'm sitting over here on 65th and Butler, and Cletus told me, he said, half of LA looking for you. And I said, why? He said, because you said you're from 6'5 Street. I said, what do that mean? <laughs> he said, every, he said, every other street want to get you. <laughs> I was like, what? So when I started seeing Killer Davis get big, I knew I didn't want really, I really didn't want no parts of that. I only did that because they were my friends. So that's why I went back to New York and I left it alone. I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't trying to get killed over 6 by Street because I said it on a record. I didn't even know who was looking for me. I didn't know how big, you know, back then, it wasn't 20 rappers out. It was five rappers out. I was one of the five. So I was in heavy rotation. So 1580K, they didn't want to play till the day because they thought it was D Rock D who half of California is looking for. Because he's from 6 5 Street. Cause I'm down with Tony Reese and Big Burt and Wayman and, 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 and Big Daddy. You know who Big Daddy is? Nah, don't know about him. Who that? Okay. Who Big that? Burt. Big, Big, Big Daddy and they all from my block on 65th Street. I fuck around and say shit I really didn't know. <laughs> you all right. <laughs> you all right, bro. <laughs> you feel what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, for sure. So when I did Killer Dayton, when we did the show at World on Wheels and all them finished show line niggas came out and they was on roller skate, yeah. I knew. I was like, this is not the hip hop that I want myself to. I... <laughs> <laughs> so I was busting wine and I let them niggas have it. <laughs> I went built for it. So I, yeah. I let them have it. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> I don't <laughs> I, I ain't banging. I ain't trying to crease down. I ain't buying all my clothes from the swap oh, in, 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 in the army Nike surplus. Man, listen. My record's all getting too big. Chris and Plus was looking for me. I'm from Six Five Street. I was in over my head. Y'all niggas can have this. I'm out. I got New York. I left New York as my out. Niggas from <laughs> Six Cause they all thought I was faking anyway. You said you're from Six Five Street. I said, yeah, but nigga, that was one two one two. If you right to get nigga, that, nigga, I'm doing a mic check, nigga. <laughs> they after me. They was after me. <laughs> and look, a mic check, a mic. Depending on how you phrase a mic check around the go 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 pull up go pull up Nissan in the city. Go pull up my fresh Nissan right now while I'm on the phone. I'm gonna do it right now. My fresh Nissan. My fresh Nissan. I'm gonna pull you up right now, bro. Let's this is when I knew I was in over my head, and then I fucked around and did kill a thing. I was like, oh, I'm really in over my head. <laughs> <laughs> this is a true story, son. <laughs> I mean, this, I can't be. This is before men to society, so you know what I mean. Like way before. This is this is before, yeah, way before. So they made movies behind that as a as a, as a movement that I was behind. Yeah. So it's I was like, like, no, I'm like, poor guy. Uh, if I was a real game banger, if I was a real crip. <laughs> Like that, and, 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 and my people, they was crimps, they was bloods. I knew all types of people, but I, I wasn't that. I see it. My fresh new Saturn records, nineteen eighty six. 
So this is came out eighty six. Let's see what you got, man. Let's see what you got. Man. All right, now listen to the beginning. This will make everybody in LA after me. I was like the warrior. I like I shot Cyrus. I just heard it. I just heard it say that. Let me see. Hold up, hold up. Yeah, take it out. My name is MCDYD, and I am from 65 Street. I'm from 65 Street. So I was always a big run DMC fan. When I did my friend Nissan, it was a remake of my Adidas. So that's when I said, okay, I'm going to start finding myself. And do this and do that. That's the path I was on. But when Clinton told me everybody in LA was looking at, look uh, after me and looking for me, <laughs> and then I fucked around and went and did a song called Killer Dayton's, I was like, oh no. And then, and, and then I had one of the biggest D dealers. I converted him from a D dealer to a rapper. So now his rapper is going to be my rapper. I let them niggas have it. Hey, it, it do sound like my Adidas. I can see where you got the melody from, the whole hook. But that, that was the East Coast in me. Yeah, I see it. I can, I can hear it in that. It Everything was, is like my I Adidas. I did that before Ice Cube stole that from me. Because Ice Cube used to look up to me too, but he won't tell you that. What? So my first Nissan was my East Coast shit oh. in California. Because I would ride my wave like mm. Nelly. I was riding my wave like 50 cents. So my way was Nissan's in the city. I was deep in the trenches of California, South Central. Then I went to bring the New York out of it. And I did my friend's Nissan because my Adidas was popping. So I was a Puff Daddy and an Ice Cube before they was remixing right in the old school. Then I fucked up and did Killer Dayton because my man D. Wanted to be a rapper, and I got tired of walking the concrete, and he had all the Cadillacs in the cars. So we were like, yeah, nigga, you can be down. He was like, y'all should do Killer Dayton, because he was smart enough to go, nigga, you famous. You famous for Nissan's, and Nissan's in the city. Mm. You should do Killer Dayton. Now I'm a fucking tire rapper. I'm <laughs> rapping about tires and cars on my first three records. I, I didn't want no more parts of it. I'll let him have it. That was it, huh? That was it for me. I'm like, nigga, I'm going to have to go shoot somebody or I'm going to have to rep a set or go get a tattoo or something. <laughs> or... <laughs> <laughs> there are serious requirements back there. <laughs> there are serious requirements. I'm doing a little too much. <laughs> they don't do it. They love me. Nigga, D-Rock, they kill you for me. That nigga said he had to get a tattoo or something. <laughs> you have to go shoot somebody or something, that nigga. I'm about to shoot somebody because standing on the bus stop was common. There's 20 <laughs> niggas on the bus stop after 1 o'clock. That wasn't safe. <laughs> 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 that nigga, he said 86. 80, nigga, I'm talking about hey. 85. 86 is when the record came out. Nigga, I was building in 84 and 85. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, man, I did. I did a find a time. Nah. Anytime you see a print on something, go two years be, be beyond that. All right. Don't hey, ever hey. let a print dictate on when something happens. Oh man. Hey, who was Thorst? Hey, who was Thorst and Wolf? Huh? Who was Thorst and Wolf? Thorst and Wolf. You know Thorst and Wolf. Yeah, you know what it is. No, I ain't never heard of that shit. Oh, no, that's that's who put your that's who putting your shit out. That's who promote the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the thing I try, and that's why I'm like, yeah, yeah. They just stole the catalog. Yeah. They just stole my catalog because they think I'm dead. They they don't you know part. They don't they don't believe I'm in New York. You know what I mean? No one's talking about D Rock in New York. So that, that's what makes So West Coast and Nick special. So Nick is like a nigga like you want to hire the A team. I know what D-Rock right is. Yeah. You feel me? Right. He like Hannibal. We can get the catalog. Yeah. He like, no, but listen, yo, yo, crazy old. Yeah. Niggas are stealing my shit out there. But see, I ain't said nothing because I know devastating E is out there. <laughs> and, you know, I really don't know, but at the end of the day, 
I went on, the, I made the record deal with David Geffen. I'm still D-Rock Everybody know I'm the originator of Killer Dayton. I got a big market overseas. I got, listen, man, if I throw some dickies on and put on 20 pounds and go stock two niggas and say, what up, blood, cuz, whatever, I can bring it all back by myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's all on it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure that. Yo, yo, yo. You have any music out right now that's making oh, it stream. Yo, Craig don't die over there. Oh, like, it's shit. funny. Oh, <laughs> yo, man. Craig, yo, you ain't got to laugh like that in a while. I can tell hey, man, you're looking at me. Hey, hey, bro, I appreciate the whole conversation. That's why I had to get this, man. This classic shit right here. Hey, hey you man. even have me dying since I've been on the phone, bro. Good looking out on me. I appreciate that. That's it. <laughs> hey, but that's 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 your truth, though, bro. That's the real deal. You know what I mean that's how you feel. That's where it is. No, that's what it is. You see, and then, and then that's what I love too. My name is Daryl Johnson. Nigga, I don't have to go on these like you see that. You see that writing. The writers. See, you see me on the writers. Yeah. When you look at that record, you look on the writer. Right, it say D L Johnson. That shit don't say D Rock D. I'm looking at it right now. What it say? Look on the writer. You gonna see D L Johnson, writer. Oh. Uh, Along with Dr. Dre and Bilal. Oh, that's that's uh. I don't want to put. That's I don't want to put Dr. Dre and Bilal together. Yeah, this is the wrong. This this is uh my fresh Nissan I'm looking at. That's probably my other one. Oh, they say oh, Dr. Doom. Slice, slice. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, my bad. Yeah, I said Daryl L. Johnson, my bad. Yeah, right up. Right oh, up. Yo, any one of the records, is, you know, T. Yeah, I'm bad. I'm the head of the game here. Yeah. I wouldn't put no D. Rock D. I couldn't cast no check with no D. Rock D. Yeah, I said, said Daryl L. Johnson. Yeah. yeah. The government was on there. Niggas didn't have to worry about who is you. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why I ain't worried about it, bro. niggas. You know. That's like I'm not telling Nick, I don't like myself to be me, because when I come back, I'm coming back to clean up all the things. It's going to be like me turning the light on, and niggas' eyes are going to get big, because niggas have been perpetrating, selling, and, and, and pretending they're mean, and, and getting real down. Okay, I got a lawsuit on 15 niggas, <laughs> and, and nine of them niggas' back, uh, uh, growth network is $2 million. I'm just playing my position. <laughs> you say 15 minutes, huh? Big Rock D come in with me. So West Coast settlement. You said 15 minutes. These niggas out here getting roided to come on. We buy catalogs now. I own the catalog. I got the right. Well, I'm not playing that shit. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> that part right there. Hey man, you know I mean? hey, I'm about to wrap it up, bro. I appreciate it. I got to go to your spam for right, man. Wrap it up, wrap it up. Hey. 2023, two D's, New York. Crazo, I appreciate West Coast, you. You know what I'm saying? Crenshaw, Western, Vermont, Hoover, D-Rock D, still that party mover, grooving with the rock and rocking with the grooving. Yo, Crazo, keep the motherfuckers moving, man. Let's get this shit going. Appreciate you, bro. Much love. Peace. Uh -huh.